playing a major character in fairy tales and mythology throughout the ages. The Grey Wolf, also known as the Timber Wolf, has been perceived in many different lights, from big, bad wolf to spiritual being. In reality, Grey Wolves may not embody such extreme vices and virtues, but they do play a vital role in maintaining ecological harmony. Keen senses, large canine teeth, powerful jaws, and the ability to pursue prey at 60 kilometers or 37 miles per hour equip the gray wolf well for a predatory way of life. A typical northern male can be about 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet long, including the bushy half meter long tail. Standing 76 centimeters or 30 inches tall at the shoulder, it weighs about 45 kilograms or 100 pounds, but weight ranges from 14 to 65 kilograms or 31 to 143 pounds, depending on the geographical area. Females average about 20% smaller than males. Although they are referred to as gray wolves, these canids actually range in color from solid white, gray, and brown. The social structure of a wolf pack is one of the most fascinating that has ever been observed. They have a very strict level of hierarchy that has to be adhered to by all of the members of the pack. This may sound harsh initially, but it is a method that allows these packs of wolves to be able to survive. The leader of the pack is the alpha male, and his mate is the beta female. Many believe that the social order of a pack is determined by fear and dominance of the one in charge. However, it isn't necessarily established by an attack on one, and the winner is the leader. It is much more complex than that. Through careful research, experts have found that this type of social structure helps to promote unity and social order. It also helps to reduce conflicts and to lower the chances of aggressive behaviors occurring among the members of the pack. The upper level of the social structure doesn't change very often. However, it can a little bit at the lower levels. Living in a pack not only facilitates the raising and feeding of pups, coordinated and collaborative hunting, and the defense of territory. It also allows for the formation of many unique emotional bonds between pack members, the foundation for cooperative living. It is during a hunt where cooperation between wolves within a pack is most apparent. Wolves are opportunists. They test their prey, sensing any weakness or vulnerability through visual cues and even through hearing and scent. Contrary to ambush predators that rely on the element of surprise and a short, intense burst of energy to secure their prey, wolves are endurance or coursing predators. They chase their prey over long distances, sometimes even a few miles, to find the right animal or opportunity. On the hunt, wolves work together with certain individuals typically carrying out their specific role in the hunt, often based on age, gender, and social standing. The home range of a pack of wolves can overlap with that of other wolves. As long as the food is plentiful, they will usually ignore each other and continue on their way. When food is scarce though, they may battle to determine which pack has the right to feed there. The average gray wolf can eat up to 20 pounds in a single sitting, but they need to eat almost 4 pounds of meat a day to sustain themselves in normal conditions. That, along with the fact that wolves hunt as a pack, leads gray wolves to focus their attention on larger prey species. In most habitats, gray wolves rely on packs of ungulates, or large hoofed prey animals, to sustain their ravenous appetites. Elk, moose, and white-tailed deer are some of the more prominent prey species that wolves feed on. As opportunistic hunters with large appetites, wolves are reliant on the habits of prey populations for survival. The typical wolf can eat 15 to 20 pack animals in a year, and those numbers can grow impressive when you take into account larger pack sizes. The winter months tend to be the most bountiful for wolves, as it leaves them with more access to weak and undernourished prey. And because wolves often have an advantage over prey when hunting through snow and tundra, early summer is also a generous time for feeding thanks to the higher presence of younger prey animals. Wolves also eat smaller prey like hares, raccoons, mice, and beavers. But the necessity of having larger prey to feast on means that the wolf often cover long distances as they follow the migration patterns of their prey. These animals are apex predators, which means that they are at the top of the food chain within their designated territories. Still, they stick together in packs for a good reason. 
there are plenty of bigger, meaner animals who are willing to consider them as prey. In general, these animals need to watch out for bears and large cats like tigers or mountain lions. When they work together, a pack can take down a polar bear, but a wolf alone might not be so lucky. The actual biggest threat to any wolf is human interaction. They often get shot by poachers, licensed hunters, and farmers who are attempting to protect their livestock. These animals also suffer from climate change caused by deforestation. When humans move in, their territory gets smaller, reducing their prey options and making survival difficult. The human presence is often credited as the reason for the drastic decline in the wolf presence across North America over the last 100 years. As you can see, gray wolves are great hunters and have amazing qualities. But can they cope in Africa among lions, hyenas, and wild dogs? We can't rule out the possibility of wolves surviving in the Serengeti just because it's hotter than the Great Plains or the Canadian Arctic. Plenty of wolves live in similar environments, like in India, Iran, or Israel. Indeed, those three countries have their own subspecies of gray wolves, called Canis lupus pilipe, a small desert-adapted gray wolf that specializes in catching antelope. If placed in the African savanna, gray wolves could evolve into a similar shape if left unmolested. There are several problems with this though. Gray wolves are a highly mobile species and could have colonized Africa long ago by crossing the Sinai Peninsula from Israel into Egypt, but they never have. You may be wondering why they didn't do it. Well, when you're entering a new environment, it is important for there to be a vacant ecological niche for the intruding animal to fill. It just so happens that every conceivable niche a gray wolf could fill has been taken by other species. The big game hunting niche has been taken by lions, spotted hyenas, and African wild dogs. Gray wolves would face competition from jackals, African golden wolves, and Ethiopian wolves even if they tried to lower their ambitions and become garbage-eating foragers. Furthermore, the potential for becoming the lunch of some other predator is far higher in Africa than in any other continent wolves currently inhabit. Let's take lions for example. Other than disease, lions are recognized as the biggest stumbling blocks to the recovery of African wild dog populations, simply because they consistently go out of their way to kill them. Wolves in Russia's Seacoat Allen region are facing a similar situation, with Siberian tigers decimating their population. If wolves struggled to survive in areas dominated by lone tigers, it would be nearly impossible for them to thrive in an area populated by entire lion prides. Even without lions, there are still spotted hyenas to take into account. Both gray wolves and spotted hyenas actually once lived together in Europe and Asia during the last ice age. And pretty much every paleontological study indicates that hyenas not only fed on wolves, also suppressed their numbers in open plain areas. The only scenario in which gray wolves would actually survive in Africa would be for them to associate closely with human settlements, where they'd eat garbage and hybridize with feral dogs, such as is the case in Italy and Israel. Now that you've heard our opinion, we want to know yours. What do you think would happen if gray wolves migrated to Africa? We're waiting for your answers in the comments. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.